forget what you know about videos. AI is creating visuals so hyper-realistic, so perfectly tailored to your imagination, that you might question what's real and what's generated on the fly. Combine that with Apple Vision Pro and you can start putting the dots together Why OpenAI technical report and sorry is called Video Generation Models as World Simulators. There are a couple of things at play which we are going to dive into, as well as connecting the dots, what this means for the future, especially when we are combining it with what Apple calls spatial computing. So first things first, Sora uses something like space-time patches of video and image latent codes. So basically space-time patches are like tokens for text. So we have patches for video. And patches have previously been shown to be an effective representation for models of visual data. Interestingly enough, when I was scrolling through Twitter, I saw a post from Lucas Bayer, and he basically was saying, you're welcome, OpenAI. I will share my home address in DM if you want to send us flowers and chocolate. And it's funny because Lucas is one of the co-authors of this research paper, which came out from Google, who talked about patches. It's also important to point out that Google released in December another paper called Photorealistic Video Generation with Diffusion Models. I promise to you, me mentioning these papers will come all together when we talk about actual data that Sora could have been trained on. The most crazy thing, which I didn't hear many people talk about, Sora doesn't necessarily know about physics and 3D space, but it's learning about it. I am PIN, a physically independent neural network. A couple of things to know that you can't access Sora as it is right now. They made this accessible to a very limited group of people called Red Team. And Red Team, basically what we do is trying to, you know, push the model's limits, almost break it, see where it can go. Welcome. We're glad you're here. Like on these kind of edges of what we want model to generate or what we don't want model to generate. Obviously, OpenAI didn't disclose any type of details, like what data it's being trained on or how much compute was required. The crazy thing here is that to achieve this type of scale, what they probably did, it's very few companies in the world who can have this much compute or data or throw insane amount of resources at them. Let's talk about the most important part, really, here, simulation capabilities. We found out that these video models exhibit interesting emergent capabilities when trained at scale. And when they say scale, think about insane amount of data and also insane amount of compute. These capabilities enable Sora to simulate some aspects of people, animals, and environments from physical world. These properties emerge without any explicit inductive biases for 3D objects, etc. They are purely phenomena of scale. As the camera shifts and rotates, people and scene elements move consistently throughout three-dimensional space. Sora can simultaneously control the player in Minecraft with basic policy while also rendering the world and its dynamics in a high fidelity. And we use example of Minecraft. The moment I saw this, my first thought was that they trained on insane amount of YouTube videos. But then if you think about it, who owns Minecraft? Microsoft. I bet you that Minecraft videos were used in the training data, but there is one more thing that OpenAI could have used to help with 3D understanding, Unreal Engine. And this again comes down to the data that I will talk about. And this is absolutely key sentence that I want you to keep in mind. Then we put these ideas together with what's happening with Apple Vision Pro. These capabilities suggest that continued scaling of video models is promising path the development of highly capable simulators of a physical and digital world and the objects, animals, and people that live within them. And of course, this model is not without limitations. It's still learning certain physics. But again, if you think a year ago what we had and what we have now, 2024 is going to be the year of video applied together with AI vision. Mark my words, with Apple Vision Pro, you will be able to prompt live and get environments, digital or physical looking environments, or modify your real existing environment? Hey, BuilderBot. First, let's start with the scene. Let's go to a park. Huh, that's all AI generated. Actually, before I dig deeper on this idea, let's talk about environment for a moment. This article on Gizmodo, very provocative title, but basically it says, despite its world-changing mission, it could be argued that OpenAI's biggest contribution to the internet has been instantaneous generation of countless terabytes of digital crap. 
you can see what we mean. The whole article is about environmental impact as well, which is not often mentioned. And they have a good point because text-to-image generators are significantly worse, environmentally speaking, than text generators. For example, creating an AI image takes the same amount of energy as it does to fully charge your smartphone. And text-to-video is going to be even more hungry for just electricity and not to mention also video creator economy, which is outside a bit of environmental problems. So there are a couple of things. Talking about data, OpenAI has two options. Either train models on openly available data or the private data. So some of the openly available video data is, for example, Kinetics 600. It has almost half a million videos from 600 action categories. There is also data set that moment in time, it has 1 million videos for event understanding. And then we have a data set from YouTube, which is publicly available, the largest multi-label video classification data set composed of 8 million videos. And if you thought that this race is crazy, Google has 500 hours of content uploaded every single minute. To put that into perspective, it is estimated that YouTube has over 2,500 petabytes of storage, which is growing every day. And Google alone processes over 24 petabytes every single day on top of that. If you're confused what petabyte is, we have gigabytes, terabytes, and petabyte is one more on top of that. And I want you to look at this crazy statistic. Video data on the internet represents over half of all global data traffic, literally. And then YouTube is the second largest engine and the biggest data producer for videos. And if we stitch that together with the research paper coming from Google about photorealistic videos, research paper coming from Google about patch sizes, and Gemini being released the same day as OpenAI Sora with more than 10 million token limit, one more move from Google, and you can generate full movie scripts and turn those into actual movies. This is the future we are talking about. So that's Google. Now, when we are talking about private data, so OpenAI has a partnership with the Shutterstock. Obviously, Microsoft is one of the biggest partners and also the biggest cloud service providers who have the largest AI spending. Microsoft alone has incredible amounts of data. Think about Bing, the Microsoft search engine indexes video content from across the web. Then we also have Skype, Microsoft Teams. Think about game recordings, exactly the ones where you saw Minecraft, live streams through services like Mixer, and even Kinect data constitutes source of video. And then the last cherry on top, there is also another data set, which is not often talked about, is surveillance footage. But we are not going to go more into that, but I just want you to keep that in mind. That could have been used as well. As I already mentioned, where my mind goes is Unreal Engine. Unreal Engine is a powerful game development platform known for its photorealistic capabilities, and it is owned by Epic Games. Epic Games has a close partnership with Microsoft, adding another layer to the possible connections here. Um, but even without considering this relationship, Chips, OpenAI could have easily leveraged Unreal Engine to generate countless of photorealistic environments and videos. These synthetic datasets could have been incredibly valuable in training their advanced AI models. I guess we'll just have to wait and see, but I will be excited to go back to this video if I'm actually right. So now stitching it all together, combine the abilities which OpenAI displayed with Sora model. Imagine what Google is working with that insane amount of data that they have. Combine that with absolutely mind-blowing token limit of 10 million with Gemini 1.5 and then we add Apple Vision Pro and add AI Vision. So all these things, when they come all together, I want you to imagine that you will be able to look at your real environment, which is again a video, and you will be able to just use your voice and tell how you want to change that environment life. You won't have to download environments to walk in them. You will have it real time because this ability, what they discovered at the large scale, but the AI models can understand space, 3D, and environments. Then next thing is obviously what Meta is working with, AI avatars. I had this thought that when two people using Apple Vision Pro are talking with each other, it's really isolating. You can't see eyes, right? What if with the snap of a finger, you are able to tell your AI model sitting in the device to change what you are seeing, a person with Apple Vision Pro on their face, into their real face with real features, digital photorealistic avatar. I think my conclusion is we're living in an absolutely insane time. And kind of this idea about that we live in a simulation doesn't sound that crazy anymore. 